Welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals, where we break down crypto projects and learn about the drivers behind the data you see on our charts. Today, I'm joined by Corey Miller from DYDX, a decentralized exchange for trading perpetual contracts. Hey, Corey, welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals. It's great to have you on. Hey, yeah, happy to be here. Would be awesome if you could kick us off by giving just a high level intro to DYDX for those not yet familiar. Yeah, certainly. So DYDX is one of the leading decentralized exchanges in all of crypto by trading volume. Um, we do roughly uh, $1 billion per day at the moment in daily trade volume. Uh, DYDX is purely focused on offering perpetuals as our main product. And so anyone who trades perpetuals um, can trade them on DYDX. We've been around uh, roughly since 2018. The protocol has gone through uh, a few different iterations, um, but yeah, the one at the moment is a perpetuals exchange. Um, it currently works on top of a layer two uh, in collaboration with Starkware. So we're built on top of StarkX. Um, on on some days in uh, in the week, you know, we are either number one or number two in terms of daily trade volume. It's usually us or Uniswap in terms of decentralized exchanges. And this is across all blockchains. Awesome. And to make sure we cover all the basics in the beginning, could you briefly explain what a perpetual is? Yeah, certainly. So perpetuals are the most traded, I would say, product in all of crypto. They were kind of popular, popularized by BitMEX. And then you know, most of the volume on centralized exchanges uh, happens on Binance now. But generally, a perpetual is a form of feature that doesn't expire. Um, and perpetuals are really interesting ways to kind of express uh, your opinions on the market. So you can go long or short certain assets, um, and they're quite efficient in terms of managing your portfolio. So you could like trade all these perpetuals with one pool of collateral. You can cross margin. Um, you get access to a lot of different pairs um, pretty easily. Uh, given that you don't actually have to touch the underlying at all. And so, yeah, for those reasons, perpetuals have become quite popular in crypto. And, you know, if anyone uh, wants to trade with leverage, um, you know, perpetuals are a really popular way to do so. Perfect. Thank you. And then on to fundamentals. Could you walk us through your business model so we understand how you're generating revenue? Yeah. So at the moment, uh, DYDX's revenue model uh, looks very similar to like a centralized exchange. Um, so DYDX, we kind of function as a hybrid um, decentralized exchange where parts of our order book or parts of our tech stack rather is centralized and then parts of it is decentralized. So our order book and matching engine in particular are centralized. And with that, uh, we kind of charge trading fees for people to trade. Um, so similarly on Binance, Coinbase, FTX, wherever, uh, we take a small percentage of every trade that happens. Now, as you're currently a hybrid exchange with some centralized parts, how and why are you looking at moving towards full decentralization? Yeah, so the goal was and has been always to become 100% decentralized. And so, you know, the way we kind of looked at it was, you know, when we started building the product, um, you know, we wanted to have all the very important parts of a decentralized exchange but we also wanted to optimize for offering a really good product. And so when you come to DYDX right now, uh, you basically can't really tell that you're trading on a decentralized exchange. It feels very much like you're actually trading on a centralized exchange. So, you know, settlement is, is instant. Um, there's no, there's no like gas costs. Um, it's very, it's very, you know, fast and snappy and so on and so forth. Um, and so for those reasons, like there, we had to make trade-offs. Um, but as we move forward in kind of the progression of DYDX protocol, you know, as, as we said, like the goal is to be 100% decentralized. We don't want to or we don't want to um, control any part of this of the tech stack in particular. And so, yeah, we've been very public about this. And um, the next version of the protocol, which we are calling version four, uh, we aim to launch that by the end of this year. Um, and so once we do that, um, you know, things will look quite different. But, uh, you know, one of the main things there is DYDX Trading. You know, DYDX Trading is the company that operates kind of the uh, order book and matching engine right now. 
Uh, we have been public and we have said we will not be taking any revenues from the next version of the protocol. Um, so that's that's one of the main things. Um, but, you know, the other main thing is, uh, you know, we, we will not have any control over the protocol any longer. Um, and so we're, we're kind of building towards that end state. Okay, interesting. So if DYDX Trading Inc. won't take any revenues from V4, what's the situation as of right now? Who does the protocol revenue accrue to and how is it used? So right now, 100% of the revenues from trading on DYDX Exchange uh, flow to DYDX Trading. Uh, DYDX Trading is basically working on the protocol full time. And so we are using all of that revenue to you know, pay employees, to operate the business, um, to do research on V4, to do marketing, etc. Um, but yeah, that, right now, that's how the protocol is, is set up. Sure. And just one more on revenue. You've been around for a long time and saw really solid growth towards the end of 2021, which you've managed to maintain pretty well. What would you say that the drivers have been behind this growth? And are there any challenges you're facing related to growing the business? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, DYDX for the history of its existence has been extremely product driven. And so whatever, whatever products that we release, um, you know, we, we tend to be steadfast in releasing the best product possible. And I think that's kind of been the main value driver for the exchange to date. You know, if you compare DYDX's product to basically any other decentralized exchange, I think you'll quickly find that DYDX is better in a lot of ways. Um, you know, both in terms of like liquidity, so the liquidity on the exchange essentially matches top exchanges like Binance and FTX. In terms of markets offered, um, we have roughly like 40 markets on the exchange right now, and we're you know always adding more. Um, in terms of the product itself, uh, the UI, the UX is, is very clean. Um, we just released an iOS app. Uh, we have all the different order types that you might want to find pretty much on a centralized exchange. And so the experience is, is very good. And so if anyone ever wanted to trade on a, on a decentralized exchange, you know, coming to DYDX is often one of the, the best avenues for someone to go. So I think that that has been one of the main value drivers. Now, moving forward, uh, you know, our goal is not to just be the largest decentralized exchange. We want to be the largest crypto exchange, period. And so what that means is we really have to grow to be larger than, you know, Binance, than FTX, than all of these large centralized exchanges. And that means creating a product um, and a user acquisition flow for people to move over from those centralized exchanges to DYDX. So really thinking about ways to onboard more people into the decentralized um, universe, let's say, uh, is, is one of the major challenges right now. Uh, as you've built a super sleek user experience, who are your main users right now that get to enjoy this? Uh, is it more focused on the retail or the institutional side? Yeah, I would say it's, it's definitely mixed. Um, we definitely have a large institutional user base. Um, so given that we are uh, operating like a, a central limit order book, um, we do rely on, you know, traditional market makers to provide liquidity to the protocol. And so these are, you know, large market makers who are trading on centralized exchanges as well. Um, a lot of those guys are trading on DYDX. Um, so they're providing a lot of liquidity. They're also just providing a lot of maker volume generally. Um, but we also do have a, a, a large user base of call it prosumers and retail. Um, and generally, these are people who are taking directional bets on the prices of certain cryptocurrencies. They are using perpetuals to hedge their portfolio, um, so on and so forth. So generally, uh, I'd say we have a, a pretty big mix of, of those two or, or those three types of, of, of people. And have you seen any changes in the split between different user groups after the recent launch of your mobile app? I'd assume that the app is mainly targeting these prosumers and, and retail users. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I definitely anticipate the, the mobile app to generate a lot more retail flow over the coming months. Um, we actually just launched the mobile app like two weeks ago or so. So it's still fairly new. Um, but yes, you know, a lot of traders, especially in crypto, they're mobile first and some are, some are even mobile only. And so having this mobile app now really puts us even closer to being on par with the centralized exchanges. Um, and, you know, you could just trade on DYDX now from your iPhone app. Uh, you don't need to log in via the desktop. You could trade on the go, so on and so forth. 
Um, and yeah, this is kind of table stakes if you, if you want to become the largest crypto exchange, right? So um, yeah, definitely excited about it. And uh, a lot more people I will continue to onboard via the mobile app in, in the coming months for sure. So if we look at your trading volume composition chart here, we can see that the majority of volume on DYDX comes from uh, the BTC and ETH pairs. Uh, how does this compare to the trading volume on centralized exchanges, if you have any insight on that data? And how do you see your trading volume composition developing into the future? Yeah, this is basically exactly what you would find on a centralized exchange as well. So the vast majority of trading and, and volume and liquidity in crypto is is kind of follows these like power laws of, of you know, the top tokens. And so BTC and ETH are the major ones that people want to trade. And then, you know, as I mentioned, we have this like long tail of tokens that are available on the platform uh, that people like to speculate on, speculate on. Um, but they don't really come close to BTC and ETH volumes and liquidity. And that's to be expected. But, you know, may, maybe a, a next question might be why even have these long tail liquidity or this long tail of, of markets on, on the platform? And the answer is people do like to trade them empirically, like even though people aren't trading them as much. People want to keep their funds on an exchange where they are confident that they will be able to trade the asset that they want immediately. And so when things are moving really fast, uh, you want to be able to get in and out of positions. You don't want to have, you don't want to have to, you know, go through and like send your, uh, send your collateral to another exchange, wait for the block times to settle, et cetera. You want to just keep your money on one exchange and you want to have access to everything immediately. And so for us to be competitive with the centralized exchanges of the world, we do have to have, you know, that long tail of, of markets available on, on the platform. Now, uh, I want to speak a bit about the DYDX token and, and start off, I'd love to hear how you're currently utilizing token incentives. Yeah, yeah. So um, there are a few different uh, DYDX, call it liquidity mining programs um, that are ongoing. And those are available on uh, the foundation, the DYDX Foundation documents. But basically, in a nutshell, um, there's uh, trading rewards, which basically provide users with rebates every epoch in DYDX based off of their open interest and fees paid to the protocol. Um, so essentially what that means is the more you trade on DYDX, the more DYDX tokens you will earn each month. There are, is also another major liquidity provider program uh, focused more on market makers. So uh, basically, you know, if you are a really good market maker, we basically judge you um, based off of you know the liquidity you provide, the depth, the spread, your uptime, and we kind of condense that into a a formula, and we rank all these market makers based off of that formula. And then those guys are competing for a static amount of DYDX every epoch as well. Um, you know, to essentially provide the best liquidity on the exchange. Um, those are the two major ones right now. Uh, we also have a DYDX staking pool. Um, so you could stake the DYDX that you have or that you earn for an additional yield. And that staking pool is to back our insurance fund. Um, and then there's another liquidity pool right now where people stake USDC. And uh, market makers could actually borrow that USDC and provide that as additional liquidity to the protocol. And in return for staking that USDC, you could also earn more DYDX. The final one on the token would be related to governance, as I think it's interesting as a hybrid decentralized exchange, the governance is probably in somewhat of a hybrid model as well. So could you kind of open how it currently works and where do DYDX holders currently have a say in the governance of the protocol? Yeah, yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so DYDX token holders have a say in a variety of parts of the protocol. One of the major ones, and I think one of the most impactful ones, is actually the, the treasury itself. And so DYDX protocol actually has one of the most ambitious grants programs in all of crypto. Um, so the, the DYDX token holders, they uh, partnered with a company called Reverie, who's uh, managing this program, essentially. Um, and, you know, they're paying a variety of, of projects uh, in DYDX to, you know, basically improve the protocol, to create new products, to create new dashboards, data analytics, et cetera, relating to DYDX. Um, and so the, that's one of the major things right now. 
few of these token holders also have um, kind of governance rights over certain technical aspects of the protocol, such as like risk parameters or like the token liquidity or, or like the liquidity mining pools that I mentioned before. Um, they actually have control over those as well. So if they wanted to adjust the formulas or if they wanted to adjust, um, you know, the uh, the actual DYDX tokens that are minted or, or, or rather given out every epoch, they could do so. Um, DYDX token holders are in control of the smart contracts, which govern the assets that are on the protocol. So every new asset or every new market, rather, that we add to the protocol um, has to be added via a governance uh, a governance vote. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that uh, the token holders have uh, the most say on at the moment. And and final question would be, uh, what's next for DYDX? I know we spoke a bit about upcoming B4 and everything related to that, but is there anything else in the product roadmap that you could share? Yeah, I mean, V4 is going to be the major thing that we're working on right now. Um, this is something that we've been heads down working on for you know, the last six months or so, and it's something that we'll be continuing to be heads down working on for the next six months as well. And yeah, I mean, V4 is is going to be, as I, as I mentioned, it's going to be fully decentralized. The token holders will kind of have the ability to govern every aspect of the protocol. It's going to look a lot different than what the what the protocol looks like today. Um, but you know, that's that's the direction that we're headed. Uh, and that's and that's kind of the route that we kind of feel will give the DYDX protocol the most, um, you know, the most value, the most users, the most, uh, you know, the best product over the long term. Um, so that's something that we're super excited about, and and we're very uh, very excited to release it, um, you know, when it's ready. Perfect. Thanks for doing this, Corey. This was great. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me.